page six of 2019 was The Successful Self by Dorothy Raw. Um, this was a really, really good book. It gave a lot of psychological insight into uh, people's minds and um, how they function. Uh, it gives lots and lots of uh, different examples as well. So it's really, really easy to kind of um, see what Dorothy Rowe is trying to say. Dorothy Rowe is kind of, I think she's an Australian uh, psychologist. Um, I'd actually never heard of her before um, when I was doing my psychology degree. So she's not like massively famous, but I think that's because she's a woman and most kind of notable psychologists of the age have usually been men because of patriarchal society. Um, and she is actually in the kind of um, area of of like psychotherapy and it wasn't as, it's not as scientific, so it's not as well kind of uh, documented as what um, other things are. But she provides a lot of insights. She's a little bit familiar, uh, similar to Jung in that sense. I never learned about Jung on my degree, but yet Jung is like, you know, really influential in, in uh, unconscious kind of psychology, which again is not very scientific, so that's why. Um, so Dorothy Rowe in this book kind of starts talking about um, introverts and extroverts and the difference between them. And that because of how introverts and extroverts are, it affects kind of um, how they perceive reality and, and what the kind of view of the world is. Um, and each of them have kind of like different threats of annihilation. So kind of like every person has a threat of annihilation that they worry about. And it's, you know, we're always suggesting that it's, it's caused by whether they're an introvert or an extrovert. So for example, um, extroverts are very much focused on external things and so they require distraction from other people from their internal nature so they don't like being with themselves and, and them internally they like to you know be distracted by other people so they really really enjoy being around other people so if you wanted to kind of threaten them with annihilation it would be to seclude them and you know for them to not have any friends they would find that situation very threatening um, and they would be very you know psychologically unwell in that situation conversely an introvert um, is they find difficulties with the external world because they can't um, control it so introverts like uh, to control things and kind of like uh, structure um, that makes them feel kind of more comfortable and they're, they're more kind of internal looking. So their kind of uh, threat of annihilation is chaos. So if an introvert is in a situation which is chaotic, that will be, make them very psychologically unwell. So they'll be absolutely fine by not having any friends and not being around people. Um, I mean, well, everybody kind of needs to be around people sometimes, but it's going to be less of a problem for an introvert than it would be for an extrovert. And then similarly, an extrovert might deal a lot better with chaos than what an introvert would. So Dorothy Rose explaining the differences kind of between them. Um, for, because the book's obviously about the successful self, uh, Dorothy Rowe is saying that for an introvert to feel successful um, because of the way that they view reality, they prefer to... Um, make progress to be achieving things and to kind of like almost working on becoming perfect so that's kind of like their view of success whereas an extrovert's view of success is to be very popular and to have lots of friends um and to you know get lots of likes on social media uh, that's kind of their view of success so like fame and fortune popularity all that kind of stuff so there's differences there between people um, based on how they perceive reality and then you know how things affect them in their reality um at around this kind of point i did start to question this because some of the descriptions that were being made i kind of felt like did fit me because i would deem myself as an introvert uh, mainly um but then i know myself if i don't have social contact for a while which i imagine everybody would be the same that I start to decline in mental health. So for me, I would think that that was an important thing as well as what an extrovert would think. Um, so I kind of wondered whether or not um, this kind of uh, threat of annihilation and all the rest of it was was um, fluid, whether it changed uh, over time or with age, because I'm definitely, so for example, when I was younger, I was very much an introvert and then I've kind of got more extroverted as I've got older. So I wondered, if that was a change or whether that's just two parts of the same, you know, spectrum of, of 
of the personality um so that's kind of why i questioned that the accuracy of that um, and then Dor dorothy Rowe kind of um describes kind of situations of therapy where people have problems with their life um, and they vary um, and as you're reading them it kind of gives you an understanding of what the problem is and why it's a problem um, and how it is reflective of this annihilation of self um, so it was really interesting to kind of read those because I, I found myself wondering about about how I am and the problems that I might have and how they might be because of of what she's talking about so I find it really really interesting um she also talks about how um generally in relationships introverts attract extroverts and vice versa because what's happening is um you're attracting your shadow which is the opposite side of yourself that you kind of uh reject it's kind of like Jungian psychology it's really interesting um I would advise going reading about that to find out more about it again not very scientific but it might be right um and so the problem with that is that whilst it works in the initial stages because you complement each other because one person's strengths is another person's weaknesses, eventually you begin to repel each other because you have a lack of understanding of the other, other person's personality. So, for example, an extrovert will find it very difficult to understand why an introvert needs to be left alone when the extrovert wants nothing but to socialise with that person. Um, and then the introvert won't understand why that extrovert needs to socialise so much and, and be out with people so much. Why can't they just kind of like be at home uh, with them or whatever? Um, so there's a kind of a lack of understanding from each perspective which makes the relationship then become difficult um what dorothy rowe also kind of suggested and i did mention this actually in one of my um other reviews because i'd read dorothy rowe's book so it informed how i was talking about it i think when i was doing the review for the the darkness visible i mentioned this but rowe suggests that madness is a choice um, and it's a choice to protect the self from annihilation so the threat of annihilation because essentially what you're doing is in terms of like anxiety, you will almost um, substitute the threat uh, and displace it onto an object. So you'll be fearful of that object rather than the threat of annihilation. So it puts some distance between that threat of annihilation and and um, and yourself. So it, you rationalise it and log logicise it that it's the object that's making you anxious and not this threat of annihilation. Similarly, she mentions kind of like for depression, a lot of people that are depressed that way because when they were a child they were in a situation where it was safer for them to think that they were the bad person than to think that their parents were the bad person because the parents were supposed to be the ones that were responsible and looking after them and being an adult so it makes sense to internalize it and think that you're the one that's done something wrong and that you're the problem and not the environment around you because that was a safer way to perceive reality so when you get older and you're still perceiving that you're the problem and not everybody else that's why you become depressed so in order to get over that you kind of have to understand that uh, depression is caused by the environment that you're in and that it's not you it was the environment and that the people around you should have been more adult and more responsible and not made you feel like, like that. Um, similarly, what Ro suggests is that um, depression is a socially acceptable way of having like a time out from your responsibilities because it allows you to withdraw from everything, to kind of recover from that threat of annihilation, that, you know, if you're an introvert, that chaos, or if you're an extrovert, that isolation, that loneliness. Um, to then take on your responsibilities again and i find that very interesting because my own experiences of uh mental health issues i did withdraw from my life and take a time out from my life and i did that because it was socially acceptable to do it i think maybe in, in days gone by it wasn't and you would have had to have just dealt with it um but for me that worked taking that time out allowed me to recalibrate and then get back to my life so I, and then that the depression lifted. So I think she has got some kind of insight there. I mean, she's got a lot of experience. I think she's been a therapist for, for I want to say 30 years, but I, I don't know exactly. I've just, it just popped in my head then. So I'm assuming I've read that somewhere. Um, she, you know, she's been a therapist for a very long time. So she's obviously seen people um, have 
issues and, and things like that and, and how to treat them. So the book was very, very insightful. It was very, very interesting, particularly about anxiety and depression and, and the life problems that she discusses and, and how they can come from our personalities um, and from how we've been treated in different environments. So I would definitely recommend it. Um, I actually found myself looking for another book of hers. Um, I think there's another one about about fear or depression or something that I was really interested in reading um I looked for it on audible but unfortunately don't have it so um that I've actually forgotten that I wanted to get that so yeah I definitely want to read more of her so I would definitely recommend reading it particularly as well if you if you're interested in mental health or you suffer from mental health issues because I think it would probably be very very helpful for you to reframe how you kind of see those disorders I think there's a lot of understanding of the disorders in, in the sense of it's like accepted as it's like a disease when it's it's usually a, a reaction to a situation um and that if you just accept it as a disease you don't work to uh like address it and then get rid of it like to cure it like it, i think that's something that's lacking in our in our mental health uh, treatment uh, these days because of of the lack of science that's behind it but this do, this kind of thinking does work for people so yeah i would definitely advise uh, reading it